Hello everyone, I'm Bra Mithra. So, you're looking for a good place to get started with Kingdom Death Monster lore. Or, you're looking for a way to establish the setting because you would like to introduce Kingdom Death to a new playgroup. Well, I can do both those things for you. <laughs> but, you gotta understand, Kingdom Death Monster lore is not fed to you in a very cohesive narrative way. It's not fed to you in a very uh, like tightly knit place. There's no, there's no place where it's all put together. Uh, it's mostly going to be delivered through the, playing the game itself, and it's going to be delivered through the expansions, and it's going to be delivered through the uh, future Kickstarter stuff, and it's going to be delivered on Kickstarter itself via the comments, and it's going to be delivered to you via every single shop store listing that gets listed. We'll each have a lore blurb. This makes getting all the Kingdom Death Monster lore together in one place really, really difficult. However, there are websites you can go to where that will help, but the majority of it will be take from in-game, from the Kickstarter, and from the shop. That's where the majority of it's coming from. Now, to get all the shop listings, because things go up and down in the shop, there's a website called uh, KDM Collector. That's the best place you can go. That's an ar It's archiving everything that's ever gone up on the shop. That is a great website. Then each one of those miniatures, you can search for whichever one you're looking for, and there'll be a lore blurb posting right there. So, that's one of the only places that is like an archive of all of it. Other places you can go to are <laughs> the Kickstarter and go through all the Kickstarter updates and you'll be able to see all the future stuff as well as the original Kickstarter one. Go through all those original updates and you'll be able to like intuit some of the lore there. But let's talk about the setting first of Kingdom Death Monster. The setting of Kingdom Death Monster is, well, it, it's meant to be more of a player-driven narrative, meaning that it's not going to be the type of setting that you go into where it's going to give you maps and all these kind of things like you would normally see in maybe like a, a tabletop RPG or like a video game. Everything you experience is going to be player-driven. It's more so like if you were to do a, uh, like a tabletop RPG, like if you were to do a West Marches type, if you were a DM who wanted to do like a West Marches campaign, in the West Marches, you have a one specific location that you give to all your players, and then your players just they decide what it is that they want to do throughout. And how this is done is the DM just you know the DM only would do a one setting, one session each time. That's all they're going to plan for. And then at the end of the session, you ask all the players what it is they want to do. Maybe you just have like one map that you're given and they just point and say, we'd like to go there or we'd want to do whatever. It's all player driven. This comes from old school uh, board games where you had like matrices of or dice tables of random events where you would draw a card and you'd, and you'd get these events and the narrative would just play out in like in front of you as you played and it wouldn't be exactly always linked together you would just come across these isolated incidents and then you would experience them. Kingdom of Death Monster is much designed to be like that. So the setting of the game is going to just be uh, this world of darkness where everything is shrouded in darkness, but you're not told why. And where you originally start in the core game is going to be just uh, stone faces all over the ground. The ground is just covered with them. And again, you're not initially told why. And then as you play, the, wor the world is going to be a mostly around monsters and humans. It's set, it's, it's got a lot of inspiration from old school, like I said, old school board games, but then also um, like older manga, older uh, anime. Um, it's also got like a horror movie in influence and stuff. It was, it's not uh, a, a fantasy setting, right? You're not going to see things like uh, skeletons and stuff like that. These, these are all, this is all quoted from Adam Poots himself. Uh, it's not meant to be like that. It's more, it's meant to look at 
the life cycles of the survivors that you play as surviving in a horrific world. And the way that the things are written, the way that the events are written, the way that the hunt events are given to you, the way the monsters are displayed to you, the way the AI cards and the hit locations are all going to be read out as you play the game, they're meant to be read by the player. It's meant to, to like, you know, it, it, it's, it's got the flawed narrator, right? You're getting, you're getting the sense, you're experiencing the world through the survivor's eyes, and you're reading it that way. You're reading it how the survivors see it. It's meant to invoke fear within the player, like a ho so like the reason why the the monsters look the way they do, and the things that you experience, and all the uh, insanity and the disorders and uh, nightmarish world and the darkness, all the way the the way the things are written for you, are meant to help the player themselves envision something that they themselves find scary rather than being told exactly what it is. And every sense of the game is going to be littered like this. Uh, it's going to be a, a, a way for the uh, what the survivors are observing, then it's going to be explained through a flawed narrator, explained to the players, and meant to, meant to evoke feelings from the players. So it's not like... Like I said, it's not going to be like a tabletop RPG where the DM's telling you what's happening and you're meant to solve puzzles or you're meant to experience the story that the DM is telling or the way a video game would do it. Like you're, it's none of that. It's none of that. It's it's meant. It's designed for the medium of a board game and it's meant to be played as a board game. So all the things that you see and experience in the game are subjective. Also, what you run into are not always going to be perfectly well told, right? You're getting the, inf the information that you're going to get throughout the game is going to be delivered, again, from, the, from that flawed narrative standpoint, but it's going to be delivered in what the survivors know, not so much what the game will tell you. So, for example, again, this video, I don't really want to spoil anything. So I'm being very vague with, <laughs> it's hard to be super vague, it's, it's hard to remain vague, but also try to explain something. Um, so I'm just going to use broad examples. So let's say a monster arrives at your settlement. You won't know its motives. You won't know what it, its, its, its goal is. You won't know what it's here for. Some monsters might be more direct in the store, in the uh, event that that triggers when they come to your settlement, but other than that, you won't know. It's only by playing the game and getting farther that you will reveal, or hope to reveal, what it is these monsters are doing. And again, the game is a shared thing. It's it's it's. Uh, Poots really wants to tell the story of the world. And the monsters that live in it. So a lot of the monsters and nemesis that you'll engage with or bosses that you'll come across, you might experience their whole entire life cycle. Um, everything is meant to feel real. The world is meant to feel lived in. That's why it's not going to be a fantasy setting where things could rely on magic or might be unexplained. Things are still unexplained in Kingdom Death, but they're going to be unexplained because the survivors don't know, more so than they're unexplained because something unexplainable is happening. So with that, you... Again, it's hard to be... I, I don't want to spoil anything, but... Let's say... You're not going to come across zombies. <laughs> let's, let's say that. Uh, and if you do happen upon something that seems like it might die, that's more so because the survivors don't understand if it is dead. The survivors perceive it as being dead, but you don't know if it actually is. That is the main goal of the game. Now, why I wanted to start here with this video vaguely explaining everything, and because it's important to get across how the game is meant to be experienced. Now, once you've played, you know, you don't even have to, you can get maybe halfway through, I would highly recommend that you get into the game and you just play it and you experience it just for what it is and then maybe you go in and maybe next time if you if you're hosting the game for players or something you don't need to explain the whole game up front 
Let them experience, because also experiencing what it is the survivors see sometimes might help you defeat the monster. It's a process of learning. Your survivors, the uh, humans in, in the world are very flawed, right? The only, the, only, the only thing, the only advantage that they have over monsters is they're very industrious or they're very good at, at sharing knowledge between themselves and they're very good at, at uh, populating and, and spreading this knowledge and making sure it goes down generation to generation. Even the survivors themselves don't understand the world. Uh, for example, with the, the way that they track time isn't the same way that we would track time. So even though the game refers to something as a year, it doesn't necessarily mean like it's representative of survivors getting older or something. It's actually representative of another thing in the world. Well, okay, I'll, 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 we'll go with this one for a spoiler, I guess, but a lantern year is how they record their time. What a lantern year actually measures is the time it takes for a lantern to burn out. And these lanterns, they're not, they don't have, they're not fire, right? They're, they're like bioluminescence. Uh, something is in there. They're like, a, they're like a, a cool, they're not, they're not burning hot. They're like a cool fluid that's in there, like a gel that's in there. Um, and it won't, it's not burning to the touch. So whatever it is that when these burn out, or stop being illuminated when they're when they're no longer lit and giving off a light source. That's a type of that's what they're tracking. The time it takes from taking the lantern from where it was, moving it away from or from where it started, moving it away from that location, putting it someplace else, and then when it burns out, that would be a lantern year. So it doesn't represent time in human like so when when you're recording well this person's only a year old or they haven't even gone out and they're not even a lantern year old it doesn't represent actual time right you it's it's hard to even say if survivors are even human in the world of kingdom death they 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 appear human they are referred to as human all the time but that's more so just so you the players can relate to them now if you were to look and go deeper into things that is my suggestion <laughs> that you play the game to start and don't immediately dive deep into the lore the lore as amazing as it is i'm going to start doing more lore videos now i've actually talked about this uh i have lore videos already ready to go i had one completely written started to record it edited it and everything and then i was like okay uh, this is high, like, this is going to be highly spoilers, uh, and it is also subjective. And I would probably need to explain this other thing first before I could explain the thing that I wanted to start with. And then I wrote that one, got everything down there, and that's another very high concept thing. And I was like, you know what? I should probably make this video where I just explain the setting and I explain how the lore is subjective to start and the intent of it is to be subjective. So, with that said, what are these other two videos and why did I have such much of struggle with them? Uh, it actually explores this concept. There are ways in which one, survivors could be humans. Right? They might, they might be, they might not be. They might, if they are humans and they live like humans and they die like humans and they pass away like humans and they live a lifespan like humans and nothing else is different from them, you can look at it from that way. That is one of the videos where I'm going to explore the world through the eyes of a human and go through their whole life's journey. There's also many entities and high concept monsters in kingdom death that perhaps maybe survivors aren't human uh maybe there's no f maybe there's uh repeated fates maybe there's there's other ways of being maybe there's intervening throughout a, a survivor's life that causes them to be the way they are this is also another very spoilerific <laughs> high concept thing which i couldn't just explain up front without doing this primer video so this very vague primer video Hopefully, it helps those who just want to jump into the lore. Go to the, the KD. It's KDM. Well, I've probably got a link right here. That's why I moved myself over here. <laughs> There'll be... <laughs> 
hopefully throughout this whole video right here, there's been stuff that's been popping up as references to what I've been explaining this entire time. So, thank you so much for watching. This is the primer. I wish you luck on your journey through Kingdom Death lore. It is a very, very fun journey. It is very subjective. With that said, all the videos that I finally start to do now on lore, remember, it's all subjective. There is maybe no right and wrong answer. The game does not want to give that to you straight, right? There's n it's never going to tell you whether or not you're right or wrong. Also, lore could change. Lore has been known to change in Kingdom Death. As more expansions come out, things get retweaked, retuned, things like that. So, thank you so much for watching. I wish you luck on your lore journey, and I'll see you in the next lore video.